In this video, we're going to talk about uh, matching markets or two-sided markets, markets that um, require both uh, enough buyers and enough sellers in order to be successful. And you could certainly argue that basically that's the definition of all markets. Um, and the reason that it has more prominence now is because uh, the internet has allowed these types of matching markets uh, to be more successful, right? To find buyers and sellers that previously would have had a lot of difficulty finding each other. Um, so we'll think about, you know, our, our main example here will be Airbnb, where you need to have enough people listing places to rent and enough people uh, looking to rent a place in order for that market to be successful. So we can have sort of two types of these markets, right? Um, one is where the activity on each side are strategic complements, and that's the area where we're going to focus on. And so the idea here is that engaging in one activity, so in our Airbnb example, uh, renting apartments, um, increases the bad benefit to the other activity, which is looking for apartments to rent. Um, and that means that we have a bit of a chicken and egg problem, right? Because if you don't have enough people listing apartments to rent, there's no point in going on to that site and looking. And if you don't have anybody looking, then there's no point in listing your apartment for rent. Um, and so with those markets, you have to think about, all right, well, how do I get enough of both supply and demand in order to be successful? Strategic substitutes would be the opposite, right? Where engaging in one activity decreases the benefit of the other activity. Uh, in that case, you'll get, you know, all of one or all of the other, but you won't get that mix. Um, we're going to focus, as I said, on strategic complements. So the way we're going to model this is with a posters curve and a seekers curve, right? So here's our, our Airbnb example. So we have a number of apartment seekers on uh, the horizontal axis and the number of, of apartments posted on the vertical axis. And we have an apartment seekers curve where that is increasing with the number of um, uh, apartments posted. And we have our apartment posters curve, which is increasing with the uh, number of apartment seekers, and they're both concave, right? So the idea is there's only so many people uh, looking to rent an apartment. There's only so many apartments for rent. So that's why they are shaped the way they are. And you'll see that what we end up with is three possible equilibria, right? So first of all, we have this zero, zero equilibria, which is labeled O. And that is definitely a stable equilibrium. Basically, there's nobody looking for apartments. So there's no apartments posted. There's no apartments posted, so there's nobody looking. Um, and there's nothing necessarily to push us out of that equilibrium. And so if you're starting up the next Airbnb, you have to think about, all right, well, how do I get enough uh, both you know, people looking to buy and people looking to sell in order to get the, the market moving? Point A is really our tipping point. So point A is where if we're less than point A, we're going to get pushed back to O and to zero, zero, because there's just not enough activity going on. But if we can get above point A, then an increased number of apartment seekers will mean we get more apartments posted and we'll keep going until we get to Z. And Z is our stable, high uh, supply, high demand equilibrium. Um, and so if we're a little bit below Z, we'll get pushed back to Z. If we're a little bit above Z, we'll again get pushed back to Z because of the concavity of both the curves. Um, and so that is going to be uh, where you're, you, you know, sort of want to be if you are, are Airbnb or any of these two-sided matching sites um, is that high supply, high demand equilibrium. And so, as I said, you know, we've got this chicken and egg problem. Uh, how do we get there? Uh, how do we get to, you know, that sort of tip, above that tipping point in, in order to get to the high equilibrium? Um, well, we could rely on public policy to create the platform. Um, so there's actually somewhat of an example there of um, doctors after they graduate from medical school and how they get matched to their first residency. Um, basically, we have a, a centralized location um, and uh, each you know doctor says who they'd like, to, where they'd like to be. Each hospital says who they'd like and people get matched. Um, it could be private initiative, right? So that's going to be risky uh, because if you don't get enough buyers and sellers, you're going to fail. Um, but one way that they can do that is, you know, to say, all right, the first, you know, 500 people on either side, they get a reduced price or, or a zero price 
Um, and so you build up that uh, the buyers and sellers on each side, and hopefully that will be successful. Um, that said, so once you've formed that new successful matching site, now you've got a network effect, right? Where if I'm listing an apartment for rent, uh, where do I go? Well, if there's only one site in town where I'm going to be successful, then that company can now get innovation rents and actually charge higher prices. And so again, we have a public policy issue because we have a network effect where it makes sense for all of us to be on that one site um, so that we have lots of buyers and lots of sellers on each side, but we want to make sure that they aren't charging monopoly prices um, and, and that can be a problem. And so this is, I think, I think this is the main challenge of, you know, the, the digital age is we have these, you know, really low marginal costs. We have these network effects. How do we regulate these sites in order to make sure that uh, the benefits are as widely enjoyed as possible while prices are not too high?